Hello there, weary traveler. Welcome to the inn. Sit, sit, rest your feet. Why, it's a long journey on the road to Tarvalon. Have a cup of tea. Or maybe a frothy ale. The light. Why, you're just in time for the entertainment. Here are your hosts, Tracy and Amber. I had to kill a couple of warders. Bad business, that, killing warders. Don't like it. Elias Makira, Eye of the World, Chapter 23. Hello and welcome back. I'm here with my friend Tracy. I'm here with my friend Amber. And this is The Road to Tarvalin, a Wheel of Time podcast. Today we're going to be doing another Westlands 101 episode on Warders, but before we jump into the main portion of the episode, we wanted to share some things that you can look forward to as we start out on our second year of Road to Tarvalin. That's right! We are getting our boots resold as we continue our meandering track toward Tarvalin. We aren't in a hurry though, and sure hope you aren't either. <laughs> During our first year, we did a lot of growing, learning, and this year we are going to take what we have learned and build it up even bigger. Mm -hmm. The core of what we do definitely is going to remain the podcast, but we will be taking on more. So adding access to more platforms, we're hoping to uh, move towards a little bit of video. We've been recording video for a few weeks now. It's getting more comfortable. I still yeah. feel a bit awkward around it, but... I think that it's going to be a really fun switch for us to like move over to the video world. I know Rob's been pushing for that for a while. So that'll yeah. be nice. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Do it. Exactly. Exactly. I think one of the things that I'm most excited about for our season two is what we've been talking about for guest episodes on our one on ones. Yes. Seriously, if you guys thought we were nerds before, just you wait. Just you wait. <laughs> Just you wait. We're going to bring some of the outside in. Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. Oh, I like that. That's an absolutely mm -hmm. perfect way of putting it. Yeah. We're also going to continue our community involvement through Discord, which has grown to one of the sweetest, kindest communities I think I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. Yeah, I love our Discord people. Everyone's awesome. I was almost asleep last night and I noticed we had a new member and before I had even like a chance to really open up and see what was going on, people were already greeting them. Snakes and Foxes was the first one to be like, hey, welcome. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thanks for being the welcoming committee. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. It was so sweet. That's going to keep going and hopefully continue to grow. This last week, we've had quite a few new people come on and it's been super fun. Super fun. Yeah. Yeah. And we're also going to be doing more in our community. We are planning some extra special stuff for our Patreon supporters. Yes. So I believe, can we like say something about the champagne chat? And how that's going to be yes, open. Yes. Yes. So for our birthday episode, we opened up the recording to anyone that was on our Discord server. And starting season two, this will be a perk for our Patreon. So you'll be able to come in and listen to us record live. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's going to be across all tiers, right? Yes. Yep. So from up the innkeeper tier all the way to Gateway Maker. Yep. Yeah, and we hope it's a perk you guys feel is worth, you know, at least three bucks a month. That'd be nice. <laughs> We're not trying to extort you, I promise. Speaking speaking of yes. Patreons. Yes, yes, I'm so glad you made that transition. It was going to be my next one. We have not had an opportunity to make this announcement yet, but we have a very special thank you to our newest patron, uh, Mistress Malin. And uh, this patron and I had a very special connection, finding out that we had the same middle name, spelled the exact same way. It was very fun. And therein is the Steel Magnolias. I love that. So do I. So welcome and thank you. Their ship. Their ship is the Steel Magnolia. Oh, is it a ship? Did I get it wrong? Oh, I totally did. Did I say in? Well, I probably did, and I was probably <laughs> wrong. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we have a new wave, a wave, wave mistress. Wave mistress. So thank you, thank you. We appreciate it so very much. Seriously, thank you to all of our patrons. 
And this is someone that I think we've known since the very, very beginning of our podcast. And I, I believe one of the very first people to leave us a voice message. And you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, all the way back from the new spring era. <laughs> <laughs> it's way safe. back in the new spring it era. It seems like ages ago, doesn't mm -hmm. it? But it was super fun. And we, we still keep coming back to new spring. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon either, truth be told. Nope. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> so thank I'm you, okay thank with you, that. Mr. Smolin, all of our other fun patrons. You make what we do even more possible and better. So thank you. So should we get started with our water episode? I'm, you know, what's funny. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to say this. We chose this topic yesterday. <laughs> and we did. We did. And Amber the Amazing went through and was like, do, 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 do. I made a doc for us. <laughs> Let's be honest. You added some things last night. Oh, yeah. Night. Four <laughs> sentences. That was me. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was but my I contribution. Feel like, <laughs> I feel like this is a fun topic because there are so many fun characters yes. and borders that, you know, you don't really need a ton of background mm -hmm. information on some of these characters. They're highly enjoyable and, yeah, it'll be fun to talk about. Yeah. I, I quickly amped up my excitement for this topic. Like, <laughs> I really, I like borders. I like their presence and their influence in the in the series i mean lan of course comes to mind immediately he's the first one yes we meet and in some ways i always expect all the warders to be just like lan and when they They're aren't not. it kind of throws me off a little bit but makes me happy like they aren't just all stone-faced yeah. soldiers yeah. some of them are playful and fun that's they're human it's interesting yeah lan is an interesting introduction into the world of water he really is yeah. he really really is but robert jordan is setting the bar very high for everyone else right like can anyone else match that once you've introduced it like here you go yeah. pinnacle of water badassery lan mm -hmm. manhandle captain Avis. Cap what are <laughs> And manhandle dragon. Captain, we can't even know. say it. Captain Too many Obvious titles. Dragoran. Okay. We'll make it. We'll make it. So, yes, I'm excited to talk about Warders. They just, it was like we decided this yesterday. I mean, how did we make it this far without deciding to do an episode <laughs> on Warders? My God, I feel like that should have been like the first, one of the first things. But I don't know. With the show coming out, like, I feel like this is a very important thing. I do too. And I don't know if the show will include all of our favorite warders mm -hmm. or all of the details because there's so much that goes into the water yeah. bond that is very under the surface and we'll get into it as well there are you can't detect the bond like a channeler can't is that right yeah they can't so it's it's not even something that someone else can who can channel can see so it's see. very yeah. mysterious so there mm -hmm. it's complicated it's layered it's jordan Exactly. Full blown Jordan. <laughs> it's Jordan. Yep. So yeah, let's do let's do warders. So what is a warder? Our first question. And uh, <laughs> yeah. That obvious. Just call me Lan. Uh, Lambert? So we'll put your name. Lam <laughs> I love it. We'll put your okay. name. That's your couple name now. Lambert. Yeah. So in the old tongue, warder is also called Gaiden. Mm -hmm. I'm actually kind of curious, like, if it has a specific meaning in the old tongue, or if it's just like a... It probably means something like bodyguard, I'm going to guess. Interesting. Okay, so, well, they have a Gaidan, Gaiden, brother two of battle. I said I use this word for warders. Brother of battle. That actually, I mean, yeah. 100%. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. And a warder is usually a man bonded to an Aes Sedai, and this bond is created by channeling Sidar. And whether by custom or law, all warders have historically been male. Mm -hmm. This person acts as a bodyguard for the Aes Sedai. They can also act as an ally or confidant. Mm -hmm. And something that I thought was really funny is <laughs> when I looked it up in the wiki the other day, it says an ally in schemes, <laughs> which made me laugh because that's so typical. I can definitely think of mm -hmm. some certain Aes Sedai who have a warder that is an ally in schemes. Absolutely. Several. 
actually. Yeah, they wear this pretty cool color-changing cloak that camouflages them, which I believe we will not be getting on the series. For real? Too much money. I Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. Fine. I mean, they have to change things. They have to change things. But certain things, when I find out that it's not going to be there, I'm like... <gasps> Because I just that's... give them a. Can you imagine just giving them a cloak, a green cloak, yes. and then using a green screen, yes. and they're just like a floating head, like, ooh, I'm a vampire. <laughs> look at me. I mean, don't look at me. You can't see me. Yeah, it's so funny. Oh, I'm disappointed, but it does. It does make sense. It would be expensive and time consuming. Yeah, mm-hmm. all that editing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So their loyalty is to their Aes Sedai above and beyond everyone and everything else. Mm-hmm. So these two are very, very, very close. Yeah. The origin of Warders, it's really interesting because it doesn't evolve until after the breaking of the world. Like this was mm-hmm. not something that was part of the Age of Legends. Mm-hmm. I believe at some point in the series, if this is too spoilery, I'll cut it out. But I always thought it was really interesting. I think... Like a- and that comes back from the Age of Legends says something about how did these primitives ever discover this complex of a weave? You know, like mm. they were they were surprised at the ability of the Third Age Aes Sedai to be able to create this weave because it's not something that had ever been used in mm-hmm. the Age of Legends. And of course, when you think Age of Legends, you think the most complex, the most over the top mm-hmm. kinds of weaves available to these Aes Sedai. So I believe what I read, there's, I don't know if it points to an actual who created it and how it came about. No, I don't think there's any name or attribution to like a certain person who came up with the weave. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to speculate, after the breaking of the world, everything went to shit crap yeah Yeah, it was just madness sadness badness (laughs) fighting the dark one fighting shadow spawn fighting dreadlords and we've talked about this multiple times this is when the white tower basically uh, well before the white tower was even a tower this was when the Aes Sedai started to handle themselves almost like a military yes so it's kind of like creating a new rank of warrior to fight within this institution Mm. i would say Mm -hmm. very specific yeah it's it's a very specific bond and it creates a very specific connection even greens i'm thinking of when we did the amarillan seat episode and we were talking Mm -hmm. about that one green aja amarillan i think during the trollic wars who died with like her five warders warders and a pile of yeah a pile of shadow spawn and fades exactly so I think from that perspective, there's this very, I think you're right, like it's very specific and goes back to kind of a safety thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they couldn't fine tune it any more than what they did or had. Do you know what I mean? Because there are so many things about what happens when the bond breaks that I would think someone, probably a brown, would be going through to try to figure out if there's a way to soften what happens to refine that weave so it's not such a harsh ending when it happens, if that makes sense. You would think, but they've had a whole lot of time to Mm -hmm. look into this and And we'll we'll get get there because we're definitely going to talk about that. So, how is it done? And it is with the use of the one power, a warder is bonded to the Aes Sedai, and this links them permanently until death of the bonder or the bondee. I couldn't think of a better way to put no, that that's because perfect. But yeah. when I read over it, I was like, yeah, yep, that's that's okay. right. <laughs> I, just, I I wouldn't have known how else to phrase it. I think that's exactly what it is, and I mean that's what what perfect transitioning did we just have? That was admirable. Um, <laughs> One of the things that that you wrote down is this is a complex weave of over 100 threads of spirit. And when mm-hmm. I was looking through the Wheel of Time companion, I think one of the things that it said was anyone who can channel can create this weave. But it's said to be incredibly complex. And we know that not all Aes Sedai have the same capabilities as far as powerful channeling. Exactly. So mm-hmm. how is it that every woman has the ability to create this very specific complex? I would imagine they could probably do it with a circle. 
you know? Oh, okay. Okay. Or like an Angriel, something to enhance yeah. their power. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, because, oh, that's a spoiler. That's okay. Save it for later. I'll Save write it, it for down. later. I mean, we know that the hierarchy in the White Tower is all about strength. So we know that there has to be a bottom somewhere to level of strength. And I didn't even think about a circle or Angriel. This is why we do this with two people. Let's talk about the bond itself. Yes, please. Okay. The warders can sense certain things about its charge. Mm -hmm. And this was written in the big white book. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they call it a charge in parentheses, but I'm assuming by this they mean the Aes Sedai. So the warders can sense certain things about the Aes Sedai, and this allows the Aes Sedai to know whether or not her warder is alive, regardless of distance from one another. They can sense certain things about each other, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no matter how far apart they might be. Mm -hmm. I like this here. The warder bonds are separate. If an Aes Sedai bonds two warders, those two warders don't share the awareness of each other as they do to the Aes Sedai they are bonded to. I find Correct. that I find that very thought provoking, and it makes sense. But I yeah, it's it's really difficult to imagine what the weaves look like. It feels like one surge would be going from one to the other, but it's not. Yeah. I know, right? It's not coming. It's not coming back through. I don't know. It's weird. I'm almost thinking of like electricity. Yeah. Like when you transmit electricity from like one mm -hmm. person to another. Did you ever do that science experiment in oh, school? Yes. Where? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What I find would drive me crazy if I were someone to bond another person is it's hard enough for me to experience my own emotions. <laughs> Let alone the emotions of four other people potentially green Aja. We're gonna Yeah, we'll get there because we're already almost thirty minutes in and we're on page one. Well then we should probably <laughs> move along. I don't know. Yeah. Amber, I don't know why you keep going off on these tangents. <laughs> so I'll hide my face in shame. Don't look at me. <laughs> So when a warder dies, the surviving Aes Sedai is, well, they'll know the moment that it happens through the bonds. Mm -hmm. And this is what Tracy was, like, getting at mm -hmm. here. I'm not going to say a character name for this, but at one point, there's a, there's a conversation that goes back and forth of what did one Aes Sedai do when their warder died? And the response was, I tore my sheets to shreds every night for months and couldn't fall asleep without weeping myself to sleep. So this bond, the severing of this bond, when it's involuntary, when it happens through the death of either the Aes Sedai or the warder, mm -hmm. it has a very dramatic effect on what happens to the bonder and bondee. See, look, it makes yes. our conversation just that much <laughs> smoother. <laughs> The Aes Sedai go through an emotional level of trauma that I imagine is not probably far off from the feeling of losing a child would be my, I mean, as hard mm -hmm. as it is to lose a spouse or something about losing a child that I feel would. It's, yeah, that's more traumatic, I feel like. Yeah, like it's... gut gut wrenching. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like a piece of you is missing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That also kind of falls in line with how stilling and gentling are described. Mm -hmm. Like as a loss of something, a hole mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. a part of you now that wasn't there before. With this trauma, the, the Aes Sedai will usually bond another warder before the emotional trauma fades from the loss of... But in, sorry, that made me like think for a moment. So my brain just kind of yeah. went like, oh, <laughs> sorry. Ping. Yeah, yeah. No. You, like my light bulb just like... <laughs> but in many cases, it takes years for her to bond another, meaning that this damage, this emotional trauma lasts for a very long period of time. Some mm -hmm. I said I don't even bond another warder at all. Yeah, I feel like that's completely understandable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if I were a character in this series, I would be very hesitant to ever have a warder. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Have someone to have my back. Sure. But right. be attached to someone like that. And have all of the... The effects of what happens after a warder would die is incredibly awful sounding. Agreed. To put it very simply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, both of my parents have passed away and unexpectedly. And 
One of my coworkers found me curled up in a corner of our filing room crying one afternoon because I just, I couldn't handle it. It just hurt so much. And like, I kind of think about that, but magnified for these women because they were actually inside each other's heads in a way that we, Mm -hmm. you and I in the world that we live in, can't connect you know what I mean? Yeah, it almost sounds like just what I've heard about when a twin loses a twin. Hmm. Like someone who's shared like such a close bond with. Yeah, that... yeah. My heart is aching. We need to move on. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. But at the same time, I don't think that it would be fair to talk about warders and the the bond between warders and Aes Sedai without at least emphasizing how harsh those circumstances yeah. are when the end of that happens involuntarily. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind that we went through like a little a little sad moment there. This is why one of the reasons why Manetherin went boom. Yeah. Like <laughs> the queen lost her husband, mm-hmm. the king who was her warder. So she just went supernova mm-hmm. and charred everything. Yep. So this is something extreme here extreme good word good word so if the Aes Sedai is killed the warder also loses their will to live they tend to seek out death on their own and the frenzy no it is they just it goes back to what I was thinking about of that Amarlin C the green Mm -hmm. who took out all of those heaps because Mm -hmm. I have a feeling maybe she died and then her warders just went ballistic and killed everything that was around them, or maybe, resulting in piles yeah, and piles. Because, and I think it could go either way as well. Yeah. Like, perhaps, like, one warder died, and then she starts she to went lose it a friends, little, yeah. which mm-hmm. then, like, spreads out to her warders, who then continue. Yeah. Ooh. If the Aes Sedai loses a warder, Mm -hmm. she feels all of this grief and emotion. Mm -hmm. Does that get passed back to her warders or are they only able to sense it? Because I have a feeling they can sense it, but they're not affected by it. I would feel that they would sense it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how affected they would be by it. You know what I mean? Because it's such an intense emotion. Yeah, I could... Right. I can assume they would feel panic, Mm -hmm. like just as a normal human emotion, feeling panic Mm -hmm. for what just happened to this person that they are bonded with. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that would make them go into frenzy mode. Yeah. I don't know. That's something we'll have to look for on our reread. I like that, though. That question. I love questions. So, yeah, with the frenzy, it's nearly impossible to keep the warder alive afterwards. It is basically the norm for a warder to go off and do something incredibly dangerous or reckless or... Like running off to the blight just to seek their own death and kill as many shadow spawn on the way as possible. Or they die trying to avenge their Aes Sedai in the event that it happens in like a battle or possibly a scheme Mm -hmm. situation, the survival of warders after the death of their Aes Sedai is the chance is minimal, really minimal. Mm -hmm. So that's something I think you would want to take into consideration. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, they're, they are, they are offering their life, you know, Mm -hmm. like they, when they become bonded to their Aes Sedai, they're choosing the needs of the Aes Sedai over the needs for themselves. So it's almost as though the bond completes its purpose when the Aes Sedai dies because the warder has already kind of given his life without the Aes Sedai mm-hmm. purpose flees. And so it just, to me, that kind of makes sense that that's how that would unfold, if you will. Not necessarily ideal. <laughs> It could be improved so that these men could survive, I think. Um, but yeah. I had to write something down. No, no, no. You're totally fine. Okay. I want to talk about the ethics of the bonds because this is some tricky stuff and I think it's really interesting. So yes. since the time of the Trolloc Wars, it has been a requirement that the man gives permission and this bond can only be done with consent. Mm-hmm. 
So because of this emotional awareness between the bonder and bondi or the bonded, the Aes Sedai or bonder may do something called masking or cloaking the bond. Mm. And this hides their emotions and their location. Mm -hmm. And this is really interesting because you feel like within this situation, these two would have a very high expectation of trust between each other. Mm -hmm. So it makes you wonder why would this masking or cloaking ever be needed? There is I'm also just trying a... not to blurt out sex. <laughs> <laughs> and I just did it anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I was thinking of something totally different, but I like that you brought that up because it's true. Mm hmm. There's also this question of obedience. Mm -hmm. Some warders are completely unaware that their Aes Sedai can compel them to obey their wishes by manipulating their bond with spirit. And this, this isn't compelling with a capital C, like in compulsion. Mm -hmm. This just means influencing. <laughs> compulsion light? Is that what you mean? Yeah, compulsion light, mm -hmm. yes. So many so, forms of that. This is not forbidden by tower law, mm -hmm. which is crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Like, crazy. Like, you will go over there and do that right now because I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of like, oh, I'm like a zombie now, I guess, whatever you say, sure. That is really interesting. Like, the, in this one mm -hmm. situation, it's okay to force someone against their will to do. Because even if it's just a nudge. Yeah. You know? Because compulsion isn't allowed in the tower right like it's, a, it's absolutely outlawed. not yeah that's yeah. what i thought so it's why would they it's make up there with yeah it's up there with bail fire why would they it's, make it's an no -no. exception for for this you know what because i mean because they are Aes Sedai and they are full of contradictions and <laughs> i don't know hypocrisy <laughs> um. i think you just i think you just found the answer well done well done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can stop our podcast now. <laughs> the Everything end. is done. It was nice hanging out, mm -hmm. everyone. Just kidding. Go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> so there's also something about mm -hmm. releasing or switching the bond. Yep. If an Aes Sedai is able to prepare for an unavoidable death, she can release her bond from her warder and spare them this uncontrollable desire for revenge and death. Mm -hmm. And a switch in bonding can be done if an Aes Sedai knows she is going to die. Mm -hmm. So just for example, in a battle situation and maybe you've exhausted yourself channeling, you can't defend yourself anymore, someone comes at you, you know this is the end, you can pass that bond off. Mm -hmm. Now, doing this without permission mm -hmm. is still, it's, it's a slippery slope because you're wanting to spare them this grief mm -hmm. and this frenzy, mm -hmm. but you also are doing something that connects them to this other person in a very intimate way that they may or may not be okay with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are some ethical questions here. Absolutely. I did not know the thing about the push for obedience. And Isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. To the Ajas. To the Ajas. Just a preference. Yeah, just to yeah. preference this. We don't have every Aja listed here, but this is just the main beats of the most important things about the Ajas when talking about orders. Absolutely. Because it shouldn't it shouldn't be surprising at all that the Ajas all have a different approach mm -hmm. to war yes. <laughs> to warders. Warders. Blech. Okay. So the greens, other Ajas are one Aes Sedai, one warder. And of mm -hmm. course the greens just can't be they can't do that. They can't do that. They're the battle Aja, so they need their own... Small army, a small battalion. Yeah, yeah, like a constant bodyguard. I mean, I think I would want that, too. I would feel pretty um, unstoppable if I were walking around with, like, a pack of deadly warders. Right? I'm wondering now, just curious, if you already have, like, 12 warders <laughs> and you lose one, is the trauma not as bad mm. if you still have connections to others because i could see that being very beneficial when you're in battle if you are a green aja that happens to find themselves in a battle mm -hmm. um <laughs> somehow <laughs> some way somehow <laughs> but you know or they just like to hang out in the tower sipping tea with their men hanging around them. right i don't know if you're not leaving the tower then, What's the point in having many yeah, like, warders? Are they just like... Is the so answer sex again? <laughs> <laughs> the 
green Aja is the thirstiest Aja. Is that what you're saying? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so good. But maybe, maybe. I mean, I'm not saying it is or isn't. The greens really kind of stand out as far as having many warders. Yeah, and so we've talked about wanting them for protection in battle. As far as marriage and warders and Aes Sedai and marriage goes, it's very uncommon for Aes Sedai to get married. And it is believed that the only Aja that ends up marrying any of their warders are the Greens. So I can only think of a, like one or two cases, maybe three in the series that's brought mm-hmm. up that marriage is involved with Green Aes Sedai and their, their warders. Yeah. To the reds. Yeah. To the reds. Sorry, I'm just thinking this about one's... the green Aja being the thirstiest Aja. That's still <laughs> kind of making me laugh. It might be true. It might, it it might, might be, be true. true. Yeah, just don't know. The red Aja is really easy because they're the only Aja that doesn't bond waters. And then the next step is the browns and the whites. It's very rare for them to have a warder. They don't often bond one, but sometimes their research or travels... I'm guessing take them to a dangerous place. And in this case, maybe they would like to have that extra protection around or companionship, I guess. They are the most bored warders. Probably. (laughs) They're boarders. Yes. (laughs) This is actually such a good question. Why have a warder or why have or be a warder? Yeah, let's speculate. So I have to think if I were a warder, or if I was thinking about being a warder, knowing that if my Mm -hmm. Aes Sedai died, I would probably end up killing myself. That's pretty Mm off-putting. Then you have to look at what they get out of it. Mm -hmm. They get fast healing. They get this ability to go longer periods without needing to eat food or drink water. Mm -hmm. They can go on fighting and have more stamina. They Mm -hmm. don't need as much rest and they also have this uncanny ability to sense the taint of the dark one's presence Mm -hmm. so it looks like they have some semblance of being able to feel and shadow spawn they also have this like gps like beacon for their Aes Sedai where the Aes Sedai can know where they're (laughs) at so if you're in a battle Mm -hmm. or something and you get split up Mm -hmm. they would be able to find their way back to you absolutely yeah and there's also a theory from some of the Aes Sedai who believe that that's in the wrong section so (laughs) uh so yeah they've got a bunch of things working for them if this is something that motivates you they also have the opportunity to train and become the most dangerous warriors i guess Mm -hmm. in the westlands past like maybe a few others of equal or greater footing you know yeah it's kind of like there's a little bit of like a like bragging rights there where there's prestige Mm -hmm. with this title where i said i can travel the westlands and everyone knows who an i said i is Mm -hmm. everyone will kind of bow in her presence doing like air quotes quotes. but being connected to that gives you a higher place in society Mm -hmm. not to mention the perks of just being trained within the tower Mm -hmm. so you become a better blade master maybe a a better fighter Mm -hmm. i mean i can easily see how becoming a warder ties you to a cause that might be very close and personal to you so i would I would imagine that a reason to become was being given a way to Mm -hmm. fulfill the things that you personally wanted to do as well. It's like having a partnership, you know? Yeah. I don't necessarily see the Warder Aes Sedai connection as subservient, even though it is, but it's Mm -hmm. frequently more like equals. When there's consent involved, Mm -hmm. it's beneficial. It's a very like symbiotic relationship. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's another good reason to become a warder 
is that mm-hmm. it gives you an opportunity to fulfill what you might feel is your destiny. And maybe right, there's, yeah. maybe there's no other reason to do it. Like, let's say you're a good, you're good at like hand to hand combat. You don't want to be a stinky white cloak. <laughs> you don't want to live on a farm, live on a farm. You don't want to be a merchant or something. Or a craft then, yeah, person. Or, or... Yeah, exactly. Maybe you feel like your skill is more along the lines of battling with the blade. Bodyguard. When you say bodyguard, all I can think of is that one meme that showed up on Instagram. (laughs) I don't remember who made it, but it's awesome. What one? I don't remember. Oh, there was one that took one of the images from the... the, I know what you... Yeah. I know. I remember now. So funny. Okay. Now we can get to your fun (laughs) facts. So fan cloth, I really like this because this is from the Age of Legends, and I'm glad that you brought yes. that in. Um, yes, yeah, more tech. Yes. So it's completely artificial, and it gives the camouflaged effect, so that the wearer seems to be invisible. They mm-hmm. look as though they blend completely into the background, whatever that background is. So, yes, the effect is and would be really difficult to translate to the show. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. But I get it. I get it. I have to ask myself because in the Age of Legends, it was used as fashion. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of what freaking purpose they would want fan cloth as, like to be the most boring fashion show of all time. Okay. So like, I have an idea. Walking down the, walking down the catwalk, <laughs> no one sees anything. Great. <laughs> They just see the reflection of, like, the people around them. Like, it's just this camouflaged weird. Everything is just an audience. And Mm -hmm. um, what I was actually thinking is, so fashion is generally connected with high society. Mm -hmm. So generally also expensive, exclusive, only Mm -hmm. used for specific things. So I can see someone wanting to have a fan cloth something. Party? Yes, uh, a yeah. gallery opening with pieces of like art. Like a gala? Yeah, like you could be a reflection of the art around you. And like depending on how mm. it was cut, it wouldn't necessarily have to cover your entire body. It could just be like maybe it's like you have a hat or hat? something. Yeah, I know mm-hmm. hats usually go more uh, horizontal, but I'm thinking like vertical fan type, yeah. like almost opening exactly. up. Exactly headband type thing like i feel as though Mm -hmm. there could be a lot of artistic applications for fan cloth but i would not see it as something that would be your everyday wear like it replaces your favorite pair of jeans somehow (laughs) can you imagine just people waiting in line at starbucks like joe your coffee is ready joe Does anyone see him? I don't see him. (laughs) I could see it like a girdle, like where it's just something. Ooh, like your middle? Yeah, the middle section, but it only is on the side, so it gives you like a slimming effect. Ooh, I'll take it. (laughs) Make your waist look teeny tiny. (laughs) With Amber's fashion fan cloth cuts. (laughs) I posted on Discord, what would you do with fan cloth? And Snakes and Foxes said, like, socks. 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 My feet look like they're gone. (laughs) I don't remember what else he said. Um, Anything (laughs) that made it look like he was float or they were floating or had a missing limb i believe um oh the socks one just killed me so hard because (laughs) oh my god what was the other one but i do know it was definitely like he either wanted to be like a foot are you okay are you okay oh my goodness i've left all of the air out of my lungs um, but it I'm is fine. funny like i'm fine you okay you sure about that yeah <laughs> yeah i'm great okay we have to move on from fan cloth but i mean like as far as uses and stuff goes mm-hmm I do. I do want to love Snakes and Foxes suggestions. I wish we could remember more of them. And I liked our speculation around, like, what would you use it for? And I think that there are, like, a lot of applications. And what the Aes Sedai choose to use it for, mm-hmm. for their warders, I think tells a lot about what they want and what they expect from their warder. 
but they also keep that just for themselves. Like no one else has mm-hmm. access to fan cloth except Aes Sedai. So there's only and one it's thing. limited. There's not there's not enough for everyone. So I have to imagine they keep it guarded within the tower. Oh, interesting. This would be a highly coveted material because mm-hmm. if it got into the wrong hands, I mean, people could really <laughs> do some damage with it. I'm assuming just sneak into yeah like whatever you want because no one can see you stealth mode definitely stealth mode. yeah can mm-hmm. you see matt the idea of matt all the gold cloth. <laughs> yeah okay we were gonna move on from that i'm sorry i brought it back up i just really liked it yes so you must be a full Aes Sedai before you can bond a warder That Mm -hmm. seems like it would be pretty obvious, but Mm -hmm. there are an awful lot of um, little scoff laws throughout the series, so you just never know what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. But good to know. (laughs) Yeah, and warders are covered by the three oaths, so an Aes Sedai can use the one power as a weapon to only to protect protect her life or the life of her warder. Yes. But you can, but you can, like, flick people with the one power and pinch them. That's allowed. That's okay. It's not It's not a mortal wound. Yeah. It's, it's just yeah. bruised for a few days, maybe difficult to walk for a moment. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It's mm-hmm. what you expect. When I first read over that, I misunderstood it and thought that, and I, I wanted to ask you about this, I thought that it meant that the three oaths applied to the warders, like they could not oh, lie, no, they no, could no. not do, and, but then I I wondered, that doesn't translate over to the warders in any way, does it? Like the three oaths, it's just wrapped on They the... can lie. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Since I misunderstood it, it made me wonder, but I, I don't think that there is any connection. Can you imagine just an Aes Sedai being like... Not even needing to lie, right? Just being like, "Hey, Jerry, right? Tell them, tell them why." <laughs> I was just thinking that the warder becomes more of like your your the puppet. mouthpiece, yeah, and yeah. you're the ventriloquist. <laughs> oh, this makes me think of who who does the puppets? Leafcast, is that right? Mm-hmm. But I don't think they sound like. They don't. Are you no. Sure? Are you sure? <laughs> Because that sounds like Beaker from the Muppets. Mm. And the adult on <laughs> Charlie Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I was like, Peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> then I was thinking of the planter's Peanuts guy in the top hat. I'm thinking like the okay. cartoon and the... Let's go on. So there is no tower law stating a maximum numbers of warders mm-hmm. allowed to be bonded. And I think that's hilarious because there's got to be some thirsty green somewhere like, I will have them all. <laughs> 100, 200. They don't have just a pack. They have like an entire battalion. <laughs> a country. Right. They move up. <laughs> they, they, all of her warders start taking up the spaces that are supposed to be for the novices that aren't there. Because... <laughs> It's... The novices' quarters get taken over <laughs> by one green's need <laughs> yeah. for multiple warders. Yes, the bond does not allow the Aes Sedai to know the actual distance from her warder, and it is possible for an Aes Sedai to relinquish her warder bond and pass it to another Aes Sedai, which I think we kind of covered before. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt to kind of just like keep that yeah. keep that in your mind that it is possible. There is a theory from some Aes Sedai that believe the trauma caused by the death of the warder is caused by the emotional control of channeling. Mm. I'd get more into that, but it hurts my brain to think about. I agree. Because yeah. it's too much too much bouncing around of weaves and mm-hmm. the bond and channeling. So there you go. Yeah, I had I had kind of the same reaction to it when I read over that. I was like, oh, okay. That hurts. That hurts my brain. Yep. Going to just throw that out there and let everybody chew it apart to on their the wind. own. Yeah. Yes. If you have thoughts on it, send them our way, please. Please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if we were wrong about something, let us know. Oh, cool. please. We'll share, we'll share your correction with the world. Happily. Happily. <laughs> Dude. And I think that's it. Yes. Yeah, that wraps up. the spoiler-free section. Spoiler-free. So. 
Thanks so much for joining us. We will continue to release new episodes every Wednesday. We would love if you would subscribe to the podcast, leave us reviews, and share us with your friends in the Wheel of Time community. Let us know what you thought of our content, correct us, send us things we may have missed. You can find links to our email and social media accounts in the show notes. And if you have the Anchor app, leave a voice message for us to play in upcoming episodes. We also have a website where you can find links to our Discord channel, social media platforms, and merch shop. So until next week, thanks for joining us on the road to Tarvalin.